as you try, you shall succeed. Christ Jesus is our wisdom. As a Christian, if you want to grow, spend more time in the Word. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you are getting, get understanding. Life International College, Christ, Knowledge, Excellence. One of the products of your school has been adjudged the best science student in the whole university. But what we are doing here is transforming the minds of these young ones. I am confident that the quality of training that Life International College has given continues to give will continue to prepare its graduates for the world out there and make them wealthy citizens. LIC has impacted them especially in relation to their spiritual lives. Our second girl was the first to come to LIC. The very first time that she came home, she was changed. Relationship between a student and a teacher is very flexible. So it's easy for me as a student to go and see my teacher and then ask him or seek his advice on a certain issue I have. LIC really changed me and Academically, especially, I, I came to the school, I wasn't the best, but then the help from the teachers, extra classes for free, I, I can boldly say that I've improved in my academic life drastically. On 0208 156 742 at LIC, we work hard and our motto remains Christ, knowledge, and excellence. Psalm 8, verse 5. You visit him. What is man? That you are so mindful of him and you visit him and you made him a little lower than Elohim. More than a little lower than Elohim. We are just a little lower than God. And you crown him with glory and with honor. My God, friend, you have been crowned with glory. You have been crowned with honor. So the suffering of this present time cannot compare with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Again, I say that. The suffering in this present time cannot compare with the glory that is to be revealed in us. I said again, the suffering you are going through today cannot compare with the glory. Listen to me. Who being so anxious can add one cubit to his life? He said, look at Solomon in all his glory. He was not like the lilies of the field. Look at these lilies. They don't grow nor spin or gather into barn. But God in all his glory. He's made it so special. Look at those flowers. Look at the plant there. Solomon cannot compare with that. That is how you are. You are precious for God. Can I have another amen? Can I have another amen? You are precious for God. You are so important for God. Your life has been programmed. And so I may be talking to somebody who is suffering and have not having enough food on his table. Another suffering, you may not have good education. And so you use that as an excuse never to progress in life. You may not have the type of education you've always been admiring. So, oh, ask for me, I didn't go to school. Anything, ask for me, I didn't go to school. That's another suffering I'm going to address today. Education is not only the ability to read and write. No. Education from Noah Webster's dictionary. Education starts by training the manners. So from Noah Webster's dictionary, education means formation of the manners. To form the manners. That's education. Formation of the manners. Number two, to tamper the person's character before scholarship. So there are three parts of education. Number one, formation of the manners. 
Number two, to temper the character. Number three, to train the manners and then give the person scholarship. And then number four, acquire skills. So reading and writing is not all there is to education. The person who wrote the dictionary, where did he get it from? It means somebody started something. There are many people today, you are so intelligent, you are so endowed, and yet you call yourself not educated? No. We have got different levels of intelligences, the multiple intelligence. Somebody who can calculate a ball and take it from an angle and score a goal is very, very educated. Somebody who can paint a picture. I got a painting from a JHS 2 student. And I was like the Iron Man. I mean, a JHS to hand pencil. That's a tool. I mean, it's it like a genius. So don't always belittle yourself and think that until someone hands you a degree, then you are not educated. I don't shoot down degrees. By the grace of God, I have a few. But then that is not what the issue is. The important thing is knowing who is in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. There are so many people, they have never stopped blaming their parents because they didn't get educated. There are so many people, they didn't stop blaming their parents because they never went to school. There are so many people, they didn't stop blaming their uncle because when their father died, the uncle didn't help them. Others didn't stop blaming their mother or their stepmother or their stepfather because they looked after their own children. They didn't look after them. Well, those were their errors. Now, can't you educate yourself? Some people have educated themselves. You can educate yourself. You are not too old to start to learn to read and write. You are not too old to learn a second language. You are not too old to learn a craft or a skill. You can educate yourself. So yes, they never educated you. Yes, let's, let's agree. Don't, don't live inside that one. Break the mold. Start somewhere. Suffering is not permanent. Don't take permanence in suffering. Don't rejoice in suffering. Rejoice that you are breaking the mold of suffering. Rejoice that you are stepping out of failure into success. Failure is a choice. Success is a choice. You only fail when you stop trying. As long as you try, God will give you the chance to succeed. I pray today, as we are looking at this suffering, you are breaking your mold. Now, verse 6, let's come to Psalm 8, verse 6. Thou made him to have dominion. Thou made him to have dominion over all the works of thy hands. And thou hast put all things under his feet. Now listen to me. You are in charge of your life. You cannot take failure for an excuse. You can have dominion to change failure into success. God says he has put all things under your feet. Man has gone to the moon. Man is now looking for ways. People have booked flights to go on the moon. And they are now trying mass as a place where people can live. We can't be here and blaming ourselves. Suffering is just temporary. Don't glorify pain. Don't take delight in discomfort. Don't say that there's no way you can change the situation. There is a way we can change every situation. I'm coming your way this morning to provoke you to holy anger, to change your situation. The prodigal son, as long as he was feeding swine and was getting something to eat, he remained there. The Bible says, when he came to himself. When he came to himself. You see, the Bible didn't tell us what happened when he came to himself. I'm sure he went out one day and he had a discussion with somebody. And the person insulted him. He said, you, your father has enough to eat and to spare and you are here struggling you, your father has enough to eat and you're here struggling. Then he came to himself. The Bible didn't tell us how he came to himself. Sometimes you need someone to speak for you to come to yourself. And when he came to himself, 
boldness came to him. He said, I will arise and go back to my father. You know what keeps us from making it? Shame, fear, disappointment. Number one, he was shameful. Number two, he was afraid. How can the father receive him? And number three, he was disappointed. I pray today, shame must not be your portion. I pray today, fear must not keep you back. I pray today, disappointment must not keep you. I am taking you out of where you are to where God wants you to be. There's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Don't allow fear to keep you. Shame must not imprison you. You can change your situation. What is dominion? Number one, dominion means power to make decisions. Power. A king makes a decision and that is it. You have dominion to make decisions. Dominion means power to make decisions. Number two, dominion means authority. When you speak, nobody can question your authority. When I speak as a pastor in my church, with the consent of all the elders and the deacons, it means we have the church's authority behind us. That's dominion. So when you speak, you have God behind you. That's authority. That's dominion. So you can change your situation and say, I will change my position. I don't want to live in this suffering any longer. I am moving out of lack. I am moving out of need. I will have more than enough. I will educate myself. I will start planning some craft. I will start doing something. I will change. I will not beg. And God will answer your prayer. That is dominion. Number three. Dominion means to rule. You cannot rule a city, but you can rule your spirit. The Bible says, he that can rule his spirit is stronger than someone who can take a city. So dominion means to rule. So you can rule yourself. You can rule your circumstances. You can rule your future. You can rule and change situations in your life. You can decide that I want to spend one hour every day to learn how to read and write. You can decide that I want to spend one hour every day to go and sell something that will bring me profit. You, you can decide that I want to take one hour every day to pray and change my situation. Dominion means to rule. You can rule your situation. You can rule. Number four, dominion means to govern. To govern. The word govern is even from ruling. To govern means to give limits. To give boundaries. So people don't go beyond those boundaries. You see a drainage? The drain and the drainage is to govern the water, to direct. That's what to govern means. So when we say the government, the government is to direct the affairs of the nation. Kings rule. They also govern. But governments, they don't just rule, they govern. So God says you have dominion to govern your life, to shape your life. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. The statement frame mean, means govern. Means the words were governed by the word of God. They were shaped by the word of God. They were framed by the word of God. How? So that the things which are seen were not made from things that do appear. Oh my God. You have the ability to change your life. You have the ability to change your circumstances. You can change your marriage. You can predict the future. So that the things which are seen were not made from things that do not appear. Your words are powerful. You have not been using your words. If you did, you were using your words in the negative sense. Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, what can happen to me? 
Oh, what good can come out of my life? Oh, my family has been cursed. Oh, I come from a family of very poor people. Oh, you see, when you say those things, you are, you are shaping poverty into your life. I break that mentality in the name of Jesus. You can shape success into your life. You can predict success into your life. You can promote success into your life. That's what you can do. Go with me to Romans chapter 7. Go to verse 24. Romans 7. Yes, that's the cry of many people. Romans 7, verse 24. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this suffering? O oh, wretched woman that I am, O oh, wretched student that I am, Oh, and you see, we don't use the word wretched. This day we use poor. Oh, I'm just a poor worker. Oh, I'm just a poor worker. Who says workers are poor? Don't say I'm a poor worker. You are not poor. You are a worker, but you are not poor. Who says people who don't work should be rich? You work to become great. Work is dignified. Next time I'll teach on the values of work. I'm a poor worker. You are not. Oh, wretched man that I am. Then he says, who shall deliver me from this body of death? It means he saw death all around him. Death everywhere around him. Maybe that's your prayer. Suffering is all around you. I'll tell you what he did. Let's go to verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Your salvation is in Jesus Christ. Who can deliver me? Jesus can deliver you. I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, I pray today, let someone change his confession. When you change your confession, you change your possession. It just works as simple as that. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. After saying, thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, he goes to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for them that be in Christ Jesus. Friend, don't condemn yourself. Use your mouth to bless yourself. The last suffering people go through, the environment, fear, debt, environment. I'm going to talk about that. Decent environment. Oh, as for me, hmm, I don't have the luxury. And so, because I don't have the luxury, the small that I have, I don't take good care of it. Sanitation of the environment. Jesus spoke to the children of Israel. He says, how can somebody wash the outside of the cup and the inside is dirty and he drinks from the inside of the cup? He says, you Pharisees, you are like whitewashed tombs. You say one thing and you do the other. He says, what goes into a man and what comes out of the man? Which one is more important? What goes into a man, excuse me, he will go through him and then he passes it out. But he says, what comes out of a man is what defies a man. Our environment is so important. We can't live in a place and make field in a place and then decide that, oh, that is the best we can do. We can do better. A lot of people are suffering. And Jesus says this. Turn with me again. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be ready to hear and to give the sacrifice. It is important when you sit by the television, hear the word. Take it to heart. Apply it to your life. When you come to church, hear the word. Take it. Apply it to heart. Because your salvation is in it. Be ready to hear. Be ready to hear. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 12. Start from verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. The Father 
who dwells in me, he doeth the works. This is not a contradiction. Look at it again. The words I speak, I speak not of myself. I speak of the Father. But then the Father, he does the works. So look at it again. I speak the words, the Father does the work. I must speak, and the Father will do the work. So if I keep my environment neat, and I want to have a decent life, then God will give me the grace to have whatever it takes to have a decent life. Don't submit yourself to the field. You can't. You are the light of the gospel. You are the light of the world. You are the light that people will see. When they see you, they see light. When they see you, they see future. When they see you, they see hope. When they see you, they see joy. Because you see, when the Christian walks, he is a carrier of God. When the Christian speaks, he is speaking the oracles of God. A man's stomach shall be satisfied with the words of his mouth. So, when we want to have full Christianity, and we don't take care, and we go through all this pain, and all this suffering, and we blame other people, we are not aware that we can start changing it gradually. Do you remember the simple adage when we uh, were learning very basic things about English? It says, brighten the corner where you are. On a more serious management theory, it is said that you don't improve generally. It's a management theory. You improve specifically. So if I want to paint this whole auditorium, I can't just come one day, shh, then I finish painting the auditorium. I start with a stroke of brush. One corner, I continue the stroke of brush. I continue the stroke of brush. It may take me three days to paint the whole thing. But I don't take note of it. That's the way life is. If you want to change your environment, start where you are. You can't improve globally. You can't improve internationally until you improve your local area where you speak. I know we may blame governments. We may blame uh, people in authority. We may blame all kinds of things. But there are certain environmental hazards that we all must contribute to. Jesus says, I came to set the captives free. That you can't go through suffering and think that that is the way of life. Nobody goes through suffering and thinks that one day things will be okay. Nobody goes through suffering and remains suffering and suffering thinks that that is the end. Now, if Jesus rose again, then we shall also rise to newness of life. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 1. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous. But for you, it is safe, too. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concession. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ. And we have no confidence in the flesh. That is very important. Go with me to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If you then be in Christ, I'm just talking about people who are in Christ. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Two, set your affections on things above and not on things on earth. Three, for ye are dead and your life is hid in Christ in God. When Christ who is our life 
shall appear, then we also shall appear with him in glory. So if you live in an area and you choose to spend time, resources, to improve the area, you are not looking to the world, you are not looking to the flesh, you are not looking to physical people, you are doing it for Christ. And when Christ appears, we shall rejoice with him. There are many people who are philanthropists. I want to have many more people who can do that, who can go beyond themselves. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Today, I've been speaking to you about suffering. I've been sharing with you what does it mean to suffer. Does it mean we should just resign ourselves when we're going through difficulty? I've told you there are three types of suffering. Anybody at all can go through the first one. As long as we are in this flesh, we'll go through suffering. There's a second one, where people suffer because of the evil things they do. But today I'm talking about the third one, when you are suffering for righteousness' sake. When you are suffering through no fault of yours, Christ will take you out of that situation. You are going to come out victorious. You are going to come out more powerful. You are going to come out as a testimony to other people because of what you are going through. Next week, I invite you to join me again because I'm going to be sharing things that will bless you and your family. And I want you to invite other people to join us. I am Bishop Gordon Kisei, and I want you to visit us in church. We're going to believe God for breakthroughs in your life. Don't allow sufferings to put you down. You are on top and not below. God bless you. I want to pray for any people today who are going through some situations. I may not do all on TV, but I invite you to come. We are going to spend time to deal with some of these things. Because there are some problems you have. The answer is not just in prayer. Just simple counseling can change the situation. Because Samuel was praying. And when Samuel was praying, God answered the prayer. But Samuel needed someone to counsel him to that how he should get the answer. He was running to Eli. And Eli was in the answer. Until Eli counseled Samuel. Samuel got the answer. So some of your problem, it's not just prayer. You need somebody to counsel you, and you get your answer. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. I want you now, wherever you are, to close your eyes with me in prayer. I'm going to ask you to consider giving your life to Jesus. You don't have to do it. It's not a force. But it's, 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 it's a decision. There's a destiny you are going to face one day, heaven or hell. Both of them is called.